Hello everyone. In this paper, that is paper 3, Physiology, Biochemistry and Immunology, under the unit 1, Physiology, we have discussed about the introduction to thermoregulation and types of animals, that is cold-blooded animals, warm-blooded animals and different types of animals like ectotherms, endotherms and the heterotherms. So, in this session, mainly, we are going to discuss about the mechanisms of the animals to overcome the thermoregulations. So, thermoregulatory mechanisms. So, animals gain or lose heat from the body or the external environment. So, the body temperature tends to increase or decrease. So, due to that what happens? The preferred temperature or the optimum temperature is very much essential for comfortable life and maximum physiological activities. So, this is how to overcome all these there are some mechanisms which organisms undergo. So, those mechanisms are called as thermoregulatory mechanisms. Examples like thermal migration, basking, hibernation, estivation, diapause, panting or puddling. So, these are the different types of thermoregulatory mechanisms. We will discuss one by one in detail. So, first one that is thermal migration. So, migration it is nothing but movement. So, here the animals they enable them to escape from extreme cold or hot condition. So, that is called as thermal regulation. So, such migration may be from uh, 1 centimeter to the 1000 miles also. So, examples like the desert animals move towards the shady place during daytime. Amphibians like toads and frog they take short trip inside and outside the water to cool and warm the temperature of the body. Burrowing animals they usually escape from the excessive heat or cold they undergo in deeper soil. Many of the homeotherms avoid extreme temperature by seeking the may like many birds you can see they migrate from very much one region to another region so that they can regulate their body temperature and also helps in reproduction. So, this is how the thermal regulation takes place. Second, basking. So, basking is nothing but the cold blooded animals they use the solar energy to rise their body temperature. Example, like you might have seen snakes they come out during early morning. So, that is very much uh, less amount of heat is generated by the sun around 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock or 7 to 9 o'clock. So, that time the snakes and lizard come outside their burrow then they heat their body and they go back to their uh, place. So, that is how the basking takes place. So, here the radiation from the sun makes their body temperature rises and due to that so what happens the body temperature may raise from more than 20 degrees celsius so this cannot be uh, happen in humans because this can be done only in the cold blooded animals very important this is hibernation so hibernation is nothing but the animals they undergo dormancy to escape from the excessive cold so hibernation is nothing but the winter sleep. So, it takes place in winter. So, it is also called as winter sleep. So, it is seasonal and periodic like depending on the season the animals undergo dormancy. So, usually this type of uh, winter sleep it takes place in frogs, toads, reptiles and also in the polar bears. So, usually what are the characters? So, the characters are the animals they find the proper protected place for their hiding themselves and they hibernate under rock or burrows. Examples as I have said toad and frogs they hibernate solitary. So, if you remove the larger rocks during the summer season 
the large toads and frogs will be in that region but they are not in groups they are solitary but whereas reptiles they aggregate themselves they come in large number maybe 5 or 6 or 10 to 20 so like snakes and all they burrow inside and they coil up and sit for longer time so even reptiles and aquatic turtles they bury themselves inside the mud under the pond so once the condition the water is very much less so they undergo inside the mud where the water content will be there and this is how the hibernation takes place in these three different types of animals so during hibernation usually the animals do not feed and they undergo starvation and also they do not move so once they are not moving energy requirement will be very much low so body reserves such as fat and glycogen so those are used for the energy purpose so here what happens if they are not eating if they are not moving obviously the respiration rate heartbeat rate body temperature metabolic rate and physiological activities of the thyroid pituitary glands is reduced so during that time the duration of hibernation it also varies from species to species so these are the characters of the hibernation so it is very important concept for your examination point of view so what are the characteristics of hibernation and what do you mean by hibernation with examples so please make a note on that and study correctly next estivation so estivation is nothing but the state of dormancy occurring in summer so hibernation is winter sleep and estivation is the summer sleep so this happens in snakes lizards and ground squirrels so examples like the snail they seek cool shady place during summer because they can secrete the thin membrane called as epimograph so usually which helps to close the shell mouth and remain dormant so the shell mouth they coil inside so snail you have might have seen they coil inside and that secretion will help in the closing the opening part of the shell or the mouth portion of the shell so once they are inside then what happens they undergo the summer sleep that is how the estivation takes place in these snails but whereas in lungfish they burrow inside the mud and secrete cocoon of slime and they remain dormant without water also the lungfish can remain for longer time and this is how they undergo summer sleep coming to very important concept that is diapause so here these mechanisms are very important they can ask you for seven marks so please uh, read correctly so diapause it is a special kind of dormancy here the diapause it is a stage in the development of certain animals during which the morphological growth and development are suspended or greatly reduced so diapause you can tell in that also there are of two types maybe you can write about the hibernation and distivation it is also a type of dormancy but here the characteristics are stoppage of growth and development and also diapause is uh, induced by three important factor those are temperature light and non availability of the food examples the red haired caterpillar of groundnut usually once they enter the pupal uh, stage the diapause happens and the period will be around 9 months but whereas in grasshopper the diapause occurs in the egg stage so this is how the diapause takes in different types of animals and this is the difference between the hibernation and estivation if they are asking for 2 marks if they are asking for 7 marks or 5 marks you need to write in detailed next fluttering of wings so as i was explaining in the introduction the fluttering of wings due to that what happens it mainly happens in insects and birds so insects they are having the special thermal problems like uh, the movement will be very much faster hence they are having high rate of metabolism during flight so in insects uh, during the cold climate the muscles cannot contract very fast so that time before their flight and after their flight what they do they flutter their wings very much or in fast to raise their body temperature and flight muscles will be activated this is how the uh, thermoregulation takes place inside the insects as well as 
birds and coming to antifreeze substance some animals they live in extreme cold conditions so that is why to for their survival there are antifreeze substances like gly uh, glycerol and glycoproteins which are present in parasites and different types of uh, fishes which are in antarctic region so mainly to survive in extreme cold condition these ectotherms their body fluid contain their antifreeze substance to prevent freezing and also to prevent freezing of their blood and different types of organs so that is why they are having antifreeze substance fur and feathers so they act as very much or very good insulators and depending on the thickness of the feather and fur uh, the insulating power is also there and along with the fur and fur, uh, fur and feathers you are having the subcutaneous fat which is present in the polar animals like polar bear seals walrus so those also help in adapting uh, adapting successfully in the antarctic region thermogenesis so thermogenesis means heat generation so here generation of heat it takes place by different types of mechanism there are two different types of mechanisms that is shivering thermogenesis and non shivering thermogenesis so during cold condition we shiver usually it comes upon itself so shivering that leads to what so once you are shivering your muscle contraction takes place and due to the contraction it liberates heat and atp is hydrolyzed and non shivering thermogenesis here what happens the fats are broken during uh, the non shivering process or the events the extreme cold condition and oxidization takes place then due to this oxidation the body will be produced in heat coming to sweating so sweating it is a normal process so once the body temperature it start to increase we sweat and later the sweat once it comes out and our body temperature decreases so this is how the sweating takes place to maintain our body temperature panting so you might have seen in dogs so they usually keep their tongue outside and here which helps in decreasing their body temperature so it is a characteristic of dog and huddling huddling is a major or very important type of thermoregulation in penguins they come together and they uh, make a circle during the high winter winds in the antarctic region to overcome the cold condition and this is how uh, once they are coming in huddles or during huddling they can reduce their uh, reduce heat loss up to 50% this is how they undergo different types of techniques so these are some of the pictures like you can see the frog they come on the surface and they come or directly go inside the water to regulate their body temperature to make their body like to warm and cold and in the second picture you can see the ground squirrel which are going inside the burrows during the day time and snakes they come for basking and as you can see in the alpine condition the yaks they are having high fur and so thick uh, tissues will be uh, in the subcutaneous fat will be present to overcome the cold condition and as you can see basking sorry not basking the panting of dogs and huddling of uh, penguins and polar bear which has undergone the winter sleep and the reptiles that is the lizard which are undergone under the rock for the diapause so this are these are the mechanisms how to how organisms overcome the thermoregulation so this is about this session so thank you